So this video is definitely not IB syllabus. It's just a bit of my philosophical meanderings. This one's on quantum entanglement. So I want to talk about quantum entanglement in a second, but I'm going to go through a little analogy first with grandma and grandpa entanglement. So we can imagine any kind of old married couple that has essentially become one. I'm imagining grandpa and grandma. They've grown so close together. They're a couple. There's a oneness about them. In fact, they're so close, whenever Grandma is talking, Grandpa raises his hand to his ear to listen. And whenever we see Grandpa talking, Grandma raises her hand to her ear to listen. So they're so close to one another that they never talk over top of each other. But let's suppose they are pensions aren't enough, they're running out of money, and they decide to rob a bank, and unfortunately they're not able to run fast enough to get away. And they go to prison, they're in separate jail cells, in separate jails, long distance away from each other. And let's suppose we're able to do a little experiment. So we've got cameras in each of their prison cells, and we started noticing that whenever Grandma is talking to herself in her cell. We find Grandpa puts his hand to his ear and listens. And whenever Grandpa starts talking to himself in the cell, we find that Grandma begins to put her hand to her ear and listen. And of course, that raises a big question, which is basically how does a Grandpa? know that grandma is talking or listening. Now in this analogy we're not saying they are communicating. So we're not saying that grandma is talking to grandpa and he's listening and he's understanding what's going on. We're just saying whenever grandma starts talking, grandpa starts listening, puts his hand to his ear. So that, that basic question is how could that oneness that they had when they were together remain when they're separated apart. We talked about the way that grandma and grandpa would grow old together and become a true couple. There was a oneness about them. And we kind of imagined a scenario in which that coupling continued even when they were separated. So now let's look at quantum entanglement. And it's, it's just when quantum particles, when they're really close together, they couple together. And their properties are no longer independent. There's a oneness about the particles. So examples of this would be, say, the two electrons in the ground state of a helium atom. They would couple together. Or we have virtual particles, say, a pair of photons can be created out of a singularity in space, they would be coupled. Or let's say we've got a positron and an electron, they're antiparticles of each other, and if they collide they will annihilate each other and produce a couple of photons. So let's draw our pair of coupled photons produced because of that annihilation. So we've got one photon going one way, the other photon going the other way. Now one of the properties of a photon is called the spin. And the spin is basically a quantum number that represents angular momentum. And the spin can take on two values. It could either be up or down. So if this photon here is up, then this photon here will always be down. So those two always go together, an up with a down. Or if this one's down, then this one's got to be up. So in the same way we had talking and listening, now we've got up and down. But it's the same basic relationship. So now let's let the photons travel for a little while. It could be that they travel a few millimeters. It could be they travel across a galaxy. It doesn't really matter. Let's make them well separated. 
And then let's suppose we make a measurement here. So we're going to measure, is it upspin or downspin? And the instant we, after we make that measurement, we're going to make a measurement over here. And we're going to compare the spins. And of course, if this one comes out to be up, this one comes out to be down. And if this one came out to be down, this one would come out to be up. Now, you're probably saying, Mr. Donor, I think you're traveling. Because grandma and grandpa, you can't tell when they're going to talk and when they're going to listen, right? It's a conversation. It's kind of a random process. You can't really make predictions. However, what we have to keep in mind here, and you can go back and watch the One Consciousness video if you want, is that until a measurement's made, the particles exist in this underlying reality, this uh, world of possibilities. And in that world of possibilities, this photon, it could be down or it could be up. It's both at once. And when we make the measurement, we collapse that and then there's a single result. So this photon is both at once. This photon is both at once as well. So it really is a random process. It's about probabilities. And then we essentially have the same question we had with grandma and grandpa. How does this photon know what the measurement was over here? They're so well separated. How could they know? So how could this photon know the measurement for the other photon? The photons are too far apart, so it can't be that light traveled from one to the other to give it that information that they measured it up. So once again, just like grandma and grandpa, we're not talking about communication between the photons. We're talking about the oneness that was there originally is still there after they separate. So let's take this oneness of quantum entanglement and take it a little step farther. Because you'll remember with the Big Bang that it begins as this singularity. So there isn't any time or space. And all the stuff of the universe is crammed into no space. So we definitely have the conditions for proximity here. And that means that we should have this quantum entanglement. There should be a certain oneness to everything in the universe. And then of course all the stuff expands creating space and even as that happens this oneness should remain. Now we can't really say what that means but we are looking at first of all we have the singularity in space, which means we can't do any physics beyond that. This is unknowable. If something's unknowable, we've got mystery. And then we've got this strange, and we're not sure what it means exactly, this strange oneness due to quantum entanglement for the entire universe. Does that mean that we found God? I don't know. But this whole story of the Big Bang and the expanding universe and the cosmology does very nicely parallel key elements of all the great religions of the world. Does it mean that there is a design to the universe? Is the oneness in that singularity and the oneness in the entire universe, is that an indication of a grand design? It seems to be, to me, what I find particularly interesting is you penetrate to the very smallest stuff in the universe and what you find is mystery. And that's all for today folks. Thank you very much.